Hey, what's going on everyone? Dan Taylor from DanThePixarFan.com here, and I'm extra pumped for today's review because today I'm taking a detailed look at the Lightyear base utility vehicle, which is part of Mattel's Lightyear 5-inch scale action figure collection. So this is honestly a nice little break from all the figure reviews I've been doing for Lightyear. It's fun that I finally have the chance to start diving into some of the awesome vehicles in this line now. Um, this is one that I found at Walmart clear back in April for $19.97. So yeah, this review has been a long time coming. Back at the time when I first saw that this was hitting stores, I was super surprised and thrilled that we were getting any 5-inch scale vehicle outside of the main XL15 ship, so it was kind of the first hint to me that this line was going to go somewhat old school, like the action figure lines of the 80s and 90s, and be a bit more expansive than the usual toy line is these days. I've mentioned this before, but I love what I call world building toys in an action figure line. And by that I mean when we get really anything outside of the main characters. I'm talking vehicles, playsets, creatures, and any other accessories, in addition to side and background characters that you can combine to recreate the film, especially specific scenes, whether we're talking about play or making displays. These world building toys, like this base utility vehicle here, just make figure lines more diverse, dynamic, and exciting. And as it turns out, from what I can remember, this vehicle is really only seen in the background of the Star Command base on Takani Prime. I don't believe this was ever one of the main ground vehicles used by Buzz or his team in the film, so this really is the perfect example of a world-building toy. Something in the film that's really just in the background for a few moments, but an awesome release nonetheless for building out the World of Lightyear in toy form. This will pair perfect with the Star Command playset coming soon, so I'll look forward to combining this with that set and all the other 5-inch scale figures, vehicles, etc. in this line. So anyway, you know I always touch on the packaging first, so let's go ahead and get my few brief thoughts out of the way. Um, really though, there's nothing too new to report on here if you've been following my reviews of this line so far. We got this nice open box style packaging here with the same overall aesthetic as the rest of Mattel's Lightyear line. It's all got the same vibe going on, as it should be in any action figure assortment. It's all very consistent. Now what do you say we open things up though, since I know you're not here to dwell on the toys packaging as nice as it is. You guys want to see this in action, so let's get this thing out and dive in. Alright, so getting this out isn't too strenuous, just a snip here will do, and then there's a perforated area on the bottom, just go ahead and tear that off, twist off the two little plastic doodads, and bam, we are in business. So here it is in hand, and I'm just really excited to finally have this out, so let's get right into everything this truck has to offer. So first here, I'm just going to turn this all around to give you guys a 360 degree look. Pretty dang good mold here actually, I do have to say, some really good molded details all around. Things are looking very much like the vehicle does in the film, at least based on that one screenshot from the trailer that I could find. The coloring seems pretty accurate based on that. And yes, again, I'll address the elephant in the room. I know it's not very detailed as far as paint ops or deco, however you want to say it, but Mattel just isn't adding a ton of painted details in this line, and that includes this truck, so I'm not going to complain about it. That just is what it is. Like I said earlier, this line is very much 90s inspired, I feel, whether that was a conscious choice by Mattel or not, but yeah, even down to the plasticky quality of the vehicle and bright pops of color, it feels very nostalgic to me in a way, so personally I'm totally cool with the minimal approach here. Mattel is not going the Star Wars vintage collection route here, to use that for an example, and this line is very kid-centric, so they're going to keep things relatively cheap. If you consider yourself a toy customizer though, heck yeah, go ahead and give this a nice black painted wash, and that alone will elevate things a ton. Moving right along, here's the underneath. Four rolling wheels, of course, as one would expect from a ground vehicle like this. And that is really it for the main turnaround. Now let's go ahead and plug in the detachable laser trencher, as it's called. Just snaps on like that, and then there's some good posability, which is really cool. Six points of articulation, actually. First, it can slide back and forth on the truck bed here, like so. Second, it can be moved up and down here at this joint. Third, the translucent blade can rotate 360 like this. And by the way, this looks to me like it's essentially an oversized laser blade sword, so it seems in the film it's the same laser technology, just utilized here for excavating. But yeah, the fourth joint here is this one, it can rotate 360. Fifth point is down here, it's a ratchet style joint, which is good, that prevents any kind of looseness or sagging when posing this out. And then lastly, the sixth joint is the base of this thing, it's all on a rotating disc, so that provides 360 degree rotation as well. So yeah, a surprising amount of posability here with this little trencher, which, by the way, is just over 8 inches tall when fully extended. Then things can fold down for storage like this, and there you go. Very cool little feature here, which adds a bit of additional play value to an otherwise pretty ordinary truck. 
Okay, so the next feature I wanna to quickly touch on is this yellow storage area. This can open up, as you can see, and you can store weapons, helmets, and any other little accessories that'll fit. Again, pretty neat stuff, perfect for imaginative play as kids play out Buzz's adventures exploring Takani Prime. Next up, I'm gonna need a figure to demonstrate the last features, so I chose the mainline XL01 Buzz figure, which made the most sense to me in the context of the film, even though he's never seen riding in one of these vehicles from what I can remember. But yeah, I also just wanted to take this opportunity to correct an error I made in my Lightyear mainline figure review. I had said that Buzz's helmet couldn't snap onto the figure securely. Well, it turns out I just didn't try hard enough, even though I thought I did. You can actually get it on just fine, so it does fit nice and tight. It just takes putting it on at just the right angle, then pushing down. It's not as easy as it is with the crystal grade Buzz figures, but I'm happy to report that it does secure on like this after all. Anyway, here is 5-inch mainline XL01 Buzz next to the vehicle for a size comparison. By the way, the truck itself is 10 inches long, 6.5 inches tall, and about 5 inches wide. And look, now I can finally utilize those peg holes under his feet that I always talk about since there's not one but two pegs on the back of the truck to secure your figures on like this. And there we go. You can pop on any of the five inch figures back there. They all have the same peg holes under their feet. And speaking of nice and secure, this figure isn't going anywhere. You can shake it, you can roll it, put it through all sorts of action and buzz will stay put as you can see. And speaking of rolling things around, here's just a little bit more of that rolling action. Uh, perfect feature. Who wants a truck toy that can't roll, right? And just a heads up, I did remove the sound of it rolling around in the editing process, mostly because my autofocus sound was overpowering it. But I do have to say, it's not a very quiet truck to roll around. It's pretty loud, actually, given that its wheels do have treads and are a hard plastic, not rubber. So just a heads up. Next up, it's fantastic that the door is open so that you can fit two of the five inch figures inside. So between two figures being able to fit on the inside, then two using the pegs back on the truck bed, this vehicle can fit four figures securely. We got the steering wheel in there, some nice molded details on the doors and the dashboard area, all the different panels and such. And it's kind of hard to see since the door blocks things a bit, but there are the two seats. Now moving on to the other side to give you all a different angle of the inside. Here's a better look at the steering wheel, which by the way, check it out, it does have some posability. Sorry, it's a small space and my hands are a bit bulky, so this isn't going too smooth here, but yeah, it can move up and down and then the steering wheel itself can rotate all the way around. So yep, a nice little bonus there, the fact that the steering wheel does have some movement to it. And I think you know what's coming next. Yep, let's get some figures in here and test out how they fit. All right, here we go. Got Buzz in a pre-approved sitting position to help save time, and boom. Naturally, it did take a little bit of adjusting to get things looking spot on, but this looks great. He fits in perfectly. It's not a tight or awkward squeeze like it is getting some figures and vehicles and other toy lines I've had. And yeah, it just looks solid, very realistic, really due to all that awesome articulation Buzz has. And yeah, he can definitely hold onto the steering wheel as well. I'll just do that adjusting off camera since I know it's gonna take a few moments. And I'll include those shots coming up during my final thoughts. Really, the last thing I wanted to demonstrate here is how you can fit another figure in the vehicle with Buzz. And there wasn't really another character that made sense to put in here. Again, since you don't see any characters in general riding this vehicle in the film. So I just chose Security Guard Fremont, um, which ended up working out just perfectly, I think. Oh, and you know what? I should touch on this just in case it wasn't obvious in the video, but the two side door windows don't have any plastic covering on them, while the front windshield does have a plastic covering. So I just wanted to make that clear. All in all, for 20 bucks, you can't really go wrong with picking this vehicle up for your Lightyear collection. For me, action figures are the most fun when paired with other toys in the line, such as play sets and vehicles, so this one was totally a must-have for me. If you're a Lightyear 5-inch scale collector, definitely consider picking this one up if you haven't already. You can snag it at Walmart, it's on Amazon, I even saw it at Kohl's, so it should be real easy to find for you. I'll also put the link to buy in the description to make it even easier. So, what do you guys think? Have you or will you be picking this one up? As always, I'll be anticipating your thoughts below, and if you enjoyed today's review, I hope you'll consider giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more Pixar toy news, reviews, and toy hunts. Find me all over social media at DanThePixarFan, and I will catch you all in my next video.